Hey guys, welcome to Master Wing. Here we are back again playing versus the Automa. We are showcasing the Asia birds this time. No other expansions mixed in. And here's our starting hand. Hoping to see some plays and some birds we don't normally see. Uh, we've got the little ringed plover, the Eurasian coot, and the orange footed scrub fowl. All pretty cheap birds. Uh, the scrub fowl has a yellow power that um, is related to ground nests. We're going to zoom in on some of these cards in a little bit, uh, but it is my only forest bird that I'm interested in. There's the blue rock thrush, but I played that recently, and um, I think I want to keep it in this game just to discard it for extra food. So we keep four cards. There's nothing in the tray uh, that I'm interested in. We've played the black drongo before. And we choose Wetland Scientist uh, for our bonus card. Like I said, we're trying some, some newer cards and birds that we haven't played. Uh, so for the first play, here we go. Orange-footed scrub fowl. The yellow power lay one egg on each of your birds with a ground nest, including this one. And that really just advances my forest. And, uh, and I grab food uh, on my next turn. The Automa. This is sped up footage, obviously, but the Automa lays an egg here. The Automa has the Rodentologist bonus card, so if there is a bird in the display tray with a rodent, uh, it's going to grab that, and if not, it's going to get a face down card uh, worth five points. Uh, here we are playing another bird, our Little Ringed Plover. Uh, it says discard one card from your hand. If you do, lay one egg on this bird. So that is an egg layer in the wetlands that we're going to try to utilize. The first end around goal is eggs in the cavity nest. And I don't see a way for us to win that goal at this point. It's not my primary focus. Uh, the Automa again gets another five points. Here's the Eurasian coot. It says tuck up to three cards from your hand behind this bird. So that's a potential three points in one activation. I'm really hoping to build on this wetlands and perhaps pull off a full tuck. We'll see. The Automa gets another five points. Uh, so they are scoring pretty heavily there in round one and they reset the tray. The red Avadavat in that top left is probably one of the best cards in the Asia expansion. However, we have played that so much recently. I'm trying to play cards that I don't normally play. So... Even though I'd normally pick that up, we're going to try something else here. We draw blind from the deck, and we grab that forest bird as well. Automa just keeps drawing uh, face down cards for this round one. So uh, that's not helping me. We are playing on the hardest difficulty, so like I said, five points. But unlike the Oceania game where they started with five nectar, we are going nectarless this game. So... Don't have to worry about that. We elect to draw cards again uh, to see what we get. And we pick up, looks like a trash card, but the Rosy Starling. Uh, we discard that other card to lay an egg on that plover. But we pick up the Rosy Starling, and I'm going to showcase that one in a, in a little bit here. Um, but that, that could really help our full tuck. As for the Automa, they're laying eggs again. Pretty heavy scoring for this round one. And uh, we only have one turn left in round one. And we could... Well, we don't have the food to play any birds. So I'm thinking we grab food right here. And we go ahead and discard that Brahmini kite for um, two food. I just haven't discarded it in the game yet. So uh, that's it. We, we lose the end round goal and we have somewhat of a foundation. Our forest isn't great. Our grassland isn't great. But I'm really hoping we can pick up some more wetland birds for this uh, Eurasian coot and this rosy starling. Oh, so I didn't discard the Bromney Kite. I discarded uh, that middle card. I forgot what it was um, for that two food in round one. And as I say that, now I discard the Bromney Kite for two food. 
Uh, we are a little desperate for food, but we are trying to expand this wetlands and get this rosy starling down. It's a really good bird. It might turn into one of my favorites. And here we go with the Automa. We're playing with the Audubon Society card, and you can see every round they're going to grab a bird and add an action cube to their end of round goal. So that's added difficulty to this. Here we are finally playing the Rosy Starling. It says tuck up to three cards from your hand behind this bird. If you tuck at least one card, gain one worm from the supply. So you are able to place this card in any habitat as the Automa gets another five points and you can score points and gain food. So that's another bird in the wetlands that can gain food. Um, could turn into the MVP here, we'll see. Uh, I draw again, since we don't have any cards in our hand, the Purple Heron and a Hornbill, which is nine points, but since I don't really have a ton of food, I think I elect to discard it for the Plover or tuck it with the Starling. Yep, tuck it with the Starling to gain a worm. Might be a mistake there. I might could have held on to that one uh, since it was nine points, but like I said, we're just trying a, a different strategy here, and, and I didn't think I could overlook the rosy starling at that point. Uh, the Automa gets two eggs, and we play a fourth bird in the wetlands, Purple Heron. It's a pressure luck bird. Choose any two dice, roll them up to three times. Each time, if you roll at least one worm or a fish, cash one here. If not, you have to return all the food cached. So it was a cheap bird to play, and I'm hoping we can score some points off of it. And we have four birds in the wetlands. The remainder of the game, we're probably just going to be drawing cards, trying to get a fifth bird. So with that advanced wetlands, we're still only drawing three cards. And so um, with the rosy starling being able to tuck up to three, and the Eurasian Coot being able to tuck up to three. And then the Plover, you discard a card for an egg. That's a potential seven points just in those three cards. And then the Purple Heron, if that scores, you're looking maybe eight, nine, or ten points. The problem is that uh, since I'm only drawing three cards, I'm not maximizing my Eurasian Coot or my Rosy Starling. So I'm really just digging for a bird that can provide more cards for us to draw. And as you can see, I haven't found it yet. Um, something like a yellow throat or a Savi's warbler, uh, maybe like a sandpiper from the uh, original game. Is there a sandpiper? Or maybe that's Asia, I can't remember. A Wilson snipe, something to let us draw two cards. Uh, to increase our tucks under the starling and the coot. We already finished round two. Uh, we failed to... Oh, you know what? I incorrectly scored the round two goal. Um, berries and seeds. So instead of putting second, I put us on zero there. So a little error, and it probably won't be our last one. We do collect two points from the end of round goal. We are shuffling, and what do you know, we do see a sandpiper in the display tray. We're going to zoom in on that card here in a second. And the Philippine Eagle is a teal power that we've played before. I pick it up just to deny from the Automa. Um, that's six points for the Automa with their Rodentologist. And here we are, I think we failed on the Purple Heron. <coughs> We do have three caches on the Purple Heron so far, so I'm kind of happy about that. Uh, we'll see how risky we go for the remainder of the game. And I keep the Common Sandpiper just because I'm not collecting any other cards to give me more card draw. The Automa collects another five points. You can see where this is going, guys. I'm not uh, super pleased with the Automa scoring. Uh, but we're still trying to highlight other birds. Common Sandpiper, draw one card for each bird in your wetlands with an egg on it. Keep one and discard the rest. So you get to see more cards with the Sandpiper. 
which is beneficial, but you only get to keep one. So uh, we will go ahead and take advantage of that, discard our eggs to draw more cards, and we pick up a couple good ones there. The Indian Peafowl and the Golden Pheasant look to be some point bombs. And we pressed our luck on the Purple Heron and failed uh, and had to not cash anything on that turn. That's unfortunate. Rosy Starling is still providing us with some worms here. So, uh, again, not maximizing these tucks, but it is beneficial to at least grab some type of food and then we discard for an egg with the plover the plover if you look at the artwork looks really similar to a kill deer they're probably related and the automa finally doesn't grab five points they do some bird feeder stuff and we don't have any pink powers to activate this game as well pretty sure it's going to be low scoring but here we are with the golden pheasant uh, I believe it says all players laid two eggs. You get to lay an additional two eggs. So I get four eggs plus the five points of the golden pheasant. I really like that bird, especially when you don't have a developed grassland. And uh, that'll help me with the sandpiper brown power as well. I did have to give the Automa some, hoard, some uh, Automa cash tokens, hoard tokens, whatever you want to call them. So for every resource, they get two food tokens. So that's why I put the fish next to the Automa. If you haven't played the Automa, it's pretty intricate. But once you play a few times, uh, you get used to it. And uh, I just think it's really cool that they added this solo mode for wingspan. And of course, on the digital version, there's an Automa as well. That's probably a little faster and more accurate. Here we are, we did the Sandpiper. We got to see five cards, I believe, but we only got to keep one. Purple Heron was not successful. Again, we're trying to roll a fish or a worm. And the only thing consistent about us is uh, the Starling and the Plover and sometimes the Coot. So we're only scoring two, three, maybe four points with the Purple Heron. Um, it's not the full tuck we envisioned. The end around goal is birds with a bowl nest, and as with a full tuck, you don't always um, have the opportunity to compete as well as you would like with end around goals. So we are here with our uh, last few turns. Well, we got like six turns left, and we're trying to dig, dig, dig just in case we find any other point bombs that we can use with these worms from the starling. And the Purple Heron, uh, we're going to roll the Purple Heron twice and cash two points. And then we tuck three for the Starling. So that's five points. That's six points for the Coot. And then a seven point egg with the Plover. I think we discarded an egg at the beginning of the turn. So that was a six point activation. Not terrible. And there's nothing in the tray. There's a seven point bird in the tray. Probably worth picking up. But we are at the end of round. And so we will shuffle our cards for the last five turns. We do have three points from our wetland scientist bonus card. But unfortunately, if you can see that stack of cards to the top right, um, we have not seen many rodentologist birds for the Automa to grab. You know, those two or three pointers. Uh, so the Automa has just collected so many five point cards. This score is probably going to be ugly. But uh, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think about these Asia cards. I think it does a great job of mixing up the style of play. We're not maximizing our turns here. But uh, in the base game, in European version, sometimes you're just kind of stuck developing that grassland laying eggs. And I just feel like it provides so much more variety to uh, win the game. So definitely something to get used to. And I think we learned a lot of lessons here. I really like the golden pheasant. I like uh, the, the rosy starling that I've said a hundred times. 
and the Eurasian Coot definitely has potential if you have that powerful card draw. We did neglect the red Ava Devot, and that would have just been a completely different game where I probably just lay eggs and score more points. Um, I do want to hang on to the Indian Peafowl. It's probably the number one or most famous bird in the Asia expansion since it's on the cover. And it's seven points. I draw the Great Indian Bustard, another big bonus bomb. And there's an argument to keep that one as well. But uh, my food generation at this point just isn't matching up to play the Great Indian Bustard. So I think I end up tucking or discarding that bird as well. Our end around goal for round four is birds pointing to the right. And we do qualify for that one. But uh, the Automa is ahead, I think. They grab another five points. And we reset the tray. And um, again, no rodentologist birds, nothing crazy. I might pick up that mini vet, if I recall. We do pick up the mini vet because we can afford to play it. And here we are with the Sandpiper, just checking, looking at cards, making sure nothing crazy good. Purple Heron. We, uh, we're satisfied with two caches with the Purple Heron. I didn't know how adventurous I'd be with these Pressure Luck Birds, but as I play more Asia, um, I'm gonna be leaning towards at least two every time. If I'm behind in the game, I'll probably do three because some of these have been pretty successful, especially the Forest Owlet. I have good memories with the Forest Owlet. And here's uh, the second to last turn of the game. I should have played the Mini Vet and the Peafowl right here because um, the Peafowl, the Indian Peafowl, Peacock, whatever, lets you draw three cards. And then that would have let me tuck a lot more that last turn. But we are spacing out. This is not our A, a game. Uh, so those of you that think we just post games we win, this is for you. Uh, but the Peafowl uh, would have given me extra cards to tuck. And instead, I'm just not even reading the card. And I just see that white win played power and think it's some bonus card bird because a lot of those white powers are bonus card birds. So we make uh, several mistakes in this game and that was one of them. Here we are with the last play of the game, the small mini vet, play one additional bird in your forest. You may ignore one worm or egg in the food cost. And here's that Indian peafowl, the double play. All players draw two cards from the deck. You draw one additional card. So that was uh, with the eggs included, like an eight point play. And then I give the Automa Horde tokens, and then I think, wait, these powers are optional. So let's take those Horde tokens back. We don't want the three cards. This, this game was just a cluster, so we're just hoping to break 90 here. And even that seems like a low score. And uh, we will live and learn. I think you learn more from your losses and mistakes. But stick around to see how bad the Automa beats me. Oh, we have a... Uh, a yellow power to activate the scrub fowl. I think we get to lay six eggs because a lot of my birds have ground nests. So the scrub fowl uh, came in clutch, I guess. 75 bird points for the Automa, which is crazy. End around goals, 20. They killed us. Eggs, um, they had 15. We had 30 tucks, which isn't terrible, but for a full tuck it is. We lose the game 92 to 110. We're going to look for redemption in this next post. Thanks for watching, and uh, tell me what you think. What birds did you like to see this game? See you next time on Master Wing.